Today when it comes to macOS Sequoia, I'll be happy to let you know that we now have a new software update and as you can see right here, this is macOS Sequoia 15.3 developer beta 3. Now for me on my MacBook Pro, this is the M1 Pro, you can see this software update comes in at 2.06 gigs and I was updating from of course the previous beta 2 and obviously this is not all that Apple released. You can see this iOS 18.3 beta 3 alongside the iPadOS version and we have macOS 15.3 beta 3 of course this is the video for that and VisionOS 2.3 beta 3. These are the updates that were released today but two days ago on the 14th you can see apple also released tvos 18.3 beta 3 alongside watchOS, and those updates i did cover even though the release wasn't as smooth apple released them and then they pulled them off and they re-released them for the 14th but today these are the updates that we have right here let me quickly update my device and then we're gonna see what are the new features and changes that this software has to offer just like that, my device is now up to date, going into the settings right here and here where it says storage, we want to see how much macOS is taking and the new build number. Now give it a moment, you can see macOS is taking 22.04 gigs, pretty much on par with the previous update and also Apple Intelligence is still the same as the previous update at 5.5 gigs and the version with the new build number you can see here is 24D5055B. So in terms of stability, it is better than what we used to have before, but compared to other operating systems that Apple has released in the past, such as Vision OS or such as tvOS, you can see these already have build numbers that end with an A, but for Mac, we are still on a B, but it's possible to go from a build number that ends with a B to an RC version, which is a candidate for an official release. In terms of what's new or what has been updated compared to the previous version, when it comes to Apple Intelligence and Siri, even though you would have an Apple M1 or newer Mac that supports Apple Intelligence, you had to go into your system settings and then go to the Siri and Apple Intelligence and then toggle this on. And when you did that initially, you had to be on a waiting list. But after this update going forward, it seems like all Mac devices and in fact all devices across the board that support Apple intelligence have this feature on by default and in case you want to know those devices you can see which iPhones which iPads and which Macs support Apple intelligence and if you are in a country or region where Apple intelligence is not yet available you can see that Apple intelligence will be available in additional languages this April with more language and platforms of of course coming in 2025 and those are going to include Chinese, English, uh, India, Singapore, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Portuguese, Spanish, Vietnamese and the greater part of the EU. When it comes to smart home and automation there's also a change whereby now Apple has added the robot vacuum support as they had promised so if you have a compatible device you have the ability to set it up and if it has the thread matter support you have the ability to use Siri to be able to command that smart robot vacuum. Another change that this update introduces across the board if you go into your settings and go to notifications the, under this section you can see we have summarized notification which was always existing but if you compare this window to the one that you currently have if you haven't updated you'll see that this wording has been rephrased a little bit and they've added like a quick disclaimer right there that says summaries may contain errors and this is across the board whether you are going to be using iOS, macOS or even iPadOS and on iOS or other devices you might actually see some of your news or entertainment applications grayed out because notification summaries are currently not working for those applications or softwares. If you are a person that began using Image Playground on macOS 15.2 or maybe an earlier version and you noticed that the results you are getting are not as good as you had anticipated, well with this update it still feels like they are not polished. Sometimes you get good results and other time you seem to just spit out random results but it does seem like the image playground model is slightly different and the results sometimes the ones that you get are much better as compared to before. I'm still experiencing the bug on airdrop and handoff specifically when I go 
from my iPhone trying to send the file to my Mac. I've sent it to Apple in the feedback assistant app and I haven't had back, but yeah, this is an issue that I'm experiencing, but if I'm sending files from this Mac to my iPhone or my other devices, then it works good. If I go to Safari, in case you're curious, you can see we are still on version 18.3, which Apple released with this version of Mac OS 15.3. And the build number that we have with this new beta is 20620.2.4.11.4. These are recent changes that Apple brought to Mac OS 15.3 with the previous updates you can see now apple has the ability to actually do incremental updates in the calculator app so 18 plus 3 you can see i started on that and i just continue to click equals and you can see the results this will work whether it's division multiplication subtraction or even addition so it's good that that is here another recent addition that apple added with this update is native gen emoji support for mac os so you can see this icon right there if i click on it right there you can see gen emoji is here so i can say a boy running and start with a few words or a phrase that best describes your idea so a boy running it's taking its time to be able to create a result it's still is here natively on mac os but it doesn't feel as smooth or as fast as what you get with the ios experience i got tired of waiting so let's go on to see some of the other changes that apple recently added to some of their applications so for example in the apple arcade recently they updated some new games and you can see here when you go to uh, the new game section right here here they've added this uh, skate city new york they've also recently added three kingdoms heroes and some of their games got new stages and new additions so even though it's an existing game they have updated a few of them and if you are an apple arcade user and you have the subscription you can check out your favorite game and see if it recently got an update in terms of my battery life and usage the main thing that i do with this update is basically just edit videos you can see when i begin editing and when i stop so if i was to go to my last 10 days right here you can see for example on um, this day tuesday i had about 12 uh, not 12 exactly maybe 11 hours of screen time and i used almost 90 uh, percent of charge which is pretty good i guess and at the same time you can see on wednesday i used about nine hours of screen on time but then i used about 125 percent of charge so the battery for me feels about more or less the same you can see my maximum health is actually on 86 percent i have apple k plus apple told me i could go and get my battery Place, but I won't do so just now but the battery life for me hasn't been the issue sometimes you know it just seems to act up or glitch I'm not sure whether it's my recording software but I see that often where I lose frames in different applications so that's one of the main things that I have right here and sometimes Safari just seems to glitch up every so often and use quite of a lot of memory i actually get a notification sometimes that this web page is using a lot of memory in safari which is very rare for me but you can see here when it comes to the release notes of this update you hear apple actually doesn't tell us much they just tell us about resolved issue with swift ui so hopefully that changes in the future but other than that that's how this update came in for me if you are waiting for the official release of mac os 15.3 well we have some good news because we could actually be seeing it soon so since we are on a weekly release cycle i mean i like apple to release updates on monday or thursdays those re are really good days for me but the next update is expected on the week of the january 20th which is most likely going to be a rc version but we are still in the air whether apple is going to release beta 4 or an rc so next week is going to be the deciding week whether we see the official release on the 27th because if the rc comes out next week then the official is most likely going to be on the 27th but other than that this is how the update is for me if you like this video leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video